I'm Victoria. And I'm Ava. In this series, we're going to be looking at Joseph's life, and today we're looking at a time that I'm sure he would prefer to forget. Yeah, he went through a tough time when many people would ask, why me? Let's watch today's God story to see how Joseph handled that. How do you spell ninjas? S. The ninja is silent. Hi everyone, it's Alyssa. Now, I wanna tell you about something that happened to my friend when we were in grade six. So we had all handed in our homework to our teacher, but then right before recess, my teacher came up to my friend and said, hey, where's your homework? And my friend was like, I, I handed it in. It was in the pile of homework, but my teacher said, nope, I can't find it. You're going to detention. Now, this was such a big deal for my friend. She was a top student. She was always so responsible. She had never been to detention before. And this happened in front of the whole class my friend was so embarrassed, it was awful. But then what happened two days later was my teacher was looking through some of her stuff and she found my friend's homework. Now, she went up to my friend and she apologized for not believing her and my friend was really touched that the teacher would come and apologize to her. When things are tough, it can be hard to remember that God is with us. But in today's God story, we'll be reminded of today's big idea. Even when things don't look good, God is with us. In this series, we've been introduced to a guy named Joseph and his 11 brothers. We heard that he was Jacob's favorite son and that he had a dream that his brothers would bow down to him. So here's what happened next. Joseph's brothers were out far away from home taking care of some sheep and their father told Joseph to go and help them. Now, while Joseph was still a long way off, his brothers could see him walking towards them and they started to make a plan to kill him because remember, they really hated him. But one of Joseph's brothers was like, no, hold up, wait, let's maybe not kill him. Let's throw him into a well and leave him there. Reuben was hoping that maybe he could save Joseph later because he really did feel bad about it. So the brothers went with this plan, but then there was a twist. With Joseph in the bottom of the well, they sat down for a meal and they saw some salespeople coming up the road. Now, they had an idea. Let's sell Joseph to these salespeople as a slave. And these salespeople would take Joseph to Egypt far away. They would never see him again. So that's what they did. But then they had a dilemma. What would they tell their father, Jacob? So they took Joseph's robe, they tore it to pieces, they dipped it in animal blood, and said to Jacob, Joseph was attacked and killed by a wild animal. As you can imagine, Jacob was devastated. Meanwhile, in Egypt, Joseph was taken to the house of a man named Potiphar. Now, Potiphar worked for Pharaoh, the king, as the captain of the palace. Guard. He was really important. Let's read what happened to Joseph when he was a servant in Potiphar's house. This is Genesis chapter 39, starting in verse 2. The Lord was with Joseph. He gave him great success. Joseph lived in Potiphar's house. Joseph's master saw that the Lord was with him. He saw that the Lord made Joseph successful in everything he did. So Potiphar was pleased with Joseph and made him his attendant. He put Joseph in charge of his house. He trusted Joseph to take care of everything he owned. From that time on, the Lord blessed Potiphar's family and servants because of Joseph. He blessed everything Potiphar had in his house and field. So Joseph took good care of everything Potiphar owned. With Joseph in charge, Potiphar didn't have to worry about anything except the food he ate. Remember today's big idea? Even when things don't look good, God is with us. Joseph had been tossed into a well and sold by his brothers to be a slave or a servant. And even in slavery, God had some pretty cool things for Joseph. As time went on, Joseph earned more and more of Potiphar's trust. But eventually, Potiphar's wife came to Joseph and tried to get him to do something that was wrong. Joseph didn't want to do it, so he ran away from her. But that made her really upset. So she went to Potiphar and falsely accused Joseph of doing something awful. Now, Joseph hadn't done it, but Potiphar believed his wife, and so he got really angry and sent Joseph to jail. Joseph knew he hadn't done anything wrong. And so even when he was in prison, he knew that God was with him. Let's read what the Bible has to say about it. While Joseph was there in the prison, the Lord was with him. He was kind to him. So the man running the prison was pleased with Joseph. He put Joseph in charge of all the prisoners. He made him responsible for everything done there. The man who ran the prison didn't pay attention to anything in Joseph's care. That's because the Lord was with Joseph. He gave Joseph success in everything he did. 
How cool is that? What a great reminder that even when things don't look good, God is with us. This was true for Joseph many times in his life, and it's true for us too. In our most difficult times, we can remember that God is with us and he's there to love us and care for us. When Jesus was on earth, he was actually God with us. And now that he died and rose again and went back to heaven, he sent the Holy Spirit to be God with us all the time. So when things are good, remember, God is with you. And when things are not good, God is with you too. When things are scary or difficult or happy or surprising or exciting or awful, God is with you. You can talk to him, you can ask him for help, you can tell him how you feel, anytime. This has been a lot of fun guys and I will see you next time. Quickly turn to the person next to you and discuss the following questions. Question time. Joseph's brothers planned to kill him but didn't, threw him in a well, sold him to some traveling salespeople, lied to their dad, or all of the above. All of the above. Mixed up. Can you say the key verse before the words are sorted? Get ready. Three, two, one, go! Say it with me. We know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. Romans 8, verse 28. What else could happen to Joseph? Almost everything went wrong in his life, but despite that, he still trusted God. I'm pretty sure even he couldn't understand why all these things were happening to him, but we never actually read about him questioning his circumstances. We have a great story to share with you. Let's check in with TJ to see how he handled life, even when it wasn't easy. Next up to bat. Time for the seventh inning stretch. I see myself as an outgoing person who uh, loves life and is organized and loves people and building relationships. I play in the softball league and I like being active and I like playing third base and shortstop. And my favorite things is to play defense and catch the ground balls. Let me start at the beginning. I was diagnosed with cerebral palsy and when I was diagnosed, the doctors didn't know whether I'd be able to walk. So when I was a little bit older, um, I ended up starting to realize I was a little bit different and I ended up not wanting to live like me, but I wanted to live like the other kids. I ended up comparing myself a lot of the time to my siblings, uh, to the people around me. Um, I'd often compare myself on social media, whether I get enough likes or uh, enough love, um, or I'd end up comparing myself saying I'm not Christian enough, um, and that ended up uh, drowning me, um, and I feel like it was a huge burden um, that I couldn't carry. Growing up, me and my parents didn't have a solid relationship. There wasn't a lot of trust, um, but we made it work. I wanted to go to Bible college, and unfortunately, doors shut, and I was so confused. I didn't know what was going on. I wanted to serve God with my life, and um, for him to shut the doors made me so confused and angry, and um, I felt like, what am I doing with my life, and is God real? And why would a God that loves me shut doors on me to serve him? I got used to the pain and expected pain always. Um, like understanding, hey, like life is gonna be harder for me. I blamed it on the disability. I blamed it on many different things. Um, but essentially, you know, um, I was just really confused and put all the blame on myself. It's 
been such a rewarding experience coming to London. So I went to church every week and I experienced their love, their support, and their compassion towards me. Um, and it just renewed a lot of life back into me. Being involved in church, whether it's being a worship leader or starting a softball team for our church, um, it's been such a great time building community and feeling God's love around us. These are important reminders for me as I walk uh, with God every day that I uh, continue to walk by faith and not by sight. For sometimes things look bad, um, but if you walk by faith and know that God's with you, um, that that's really important to me. Um, and Psalm 119, 105, for you're a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. He's there with you, even though the path is hard and, and you don't understand it, that he's always gonna be there with you and never forsake you. From what I learned, comparison is a dangerous uh, thing to do. Um, whether you're comparing yourself to a more successful person or on social media, comparing yourself to likes. God loves us just the way we are. And as much as we, we try to think that that's some, these things are important, God made us perfect and he loves you so much just the way you are. Looking back, um, even though there was hard times, whether it was accepting my cerebral palsy or not having a solid relationship with my parents or not going to Bible college, um, I know that God has been with me all through that all. And it took me a while just to accept his love. But once I did that, um, it's been so rewarding. Um, and I just want to spread that to other people. TJ is such a good example of trusting God and looking to Him even when the circumstances are hard. I absolutely love that he started the softball league at church. And remember how we saw him playing the guitar? Yeah. I heard that he's actually a worship leader at church. Yeah, he clearly lives out his faith. Well, it's time to break into our small groups to see how this looks like in our lives.